few numerical examples that might indicate to you or convince you that this statement below is true. Uh, let's do 2 raised to the prime power of 3. That's equal to 7, and out pops a prime, right? Okay, let's go to the next prime number. Oh, oh, notice that 2 squared minus 1 is 3 also. I didn't write that down, but okay, now what about 2 to the 5th? 5 is a prime number. 2 to the 5th is 32 minus 1 is equal to 31, and 31 is certainly prime, right? And again, I, I 2 squared, same thing. 2 squared minus 1 is, uh, 2 is the only even prime. 2 squared minus 1 is 4 minus 1 is 3, and 3 is prime, right? So, so far, the first three prime numbers give uh, credence to the possibility of this being true. It says, given k a prime integer, 3 is prime, 5 is prime, 2 to the k minus 1 is prime. That happened three times. I listed two of them, okay? Now, let's, let's go through a, a, a proof. We'll call it a proof for now. Now, this is a result that I proved in an earlier video. In fact, the, the second to the last one, I proved, I proved this result. For all positive integers, we get this result. 2 to the mn is congruent to 1 modulo 2 to the m minus 1. Okay. Proof depends on the finite geometric series or, and, um, and just properties of exponents. Uh, at least the proof I did. Somebody did it in binary. One of the, one of the viewers did it in binary. It's pretty interesting. Uh, but anyway, now we're going to start. We're, we're given that k is a prime integer. So this is the only factorization for k. k times 1, like 7 times 1 is 7. And those are the only factor. That's the only factorization of 7. 11 times 1 is, is 11. And that's the only fact, uh, integer factorization of 11. Right? Okay. So here we go. And I'm trying to appeal to this result right here. 2 to the k. I'm using this. Y'all, directly from here, I'm just using this, this fact. I'll call it a fact. It's a, you could call it a theorem in number theory. Okay. Now, notice that a congruence means this particular congruence, 2 to the, two to the k times 1. I put the 1 there for emphasis, emphasizing k is prime, and it's the only factorization uh, of, of k. Um, it means this, where r is just some integer. Okay. It means this, or it's 2 to the k minus 1 is some multiple. Notice I use r for our multiple here. Is, is some multiple of 2 to the k minus 1. Okay? So, uh, the only way this can happen is when r is equal to 1, right? So, you see, we get, we get 2 to the k minus 1 is equal to... Uh, 2 to the k, and I'll put it in parentheses just for, I guess, clarity, um, times 1, right? So we've shown the only factorization, or what appears to be the only factorization, is the object. Oh, this is 1, y'all. Sorry, this is 1. Let me make that a fancier, kind of a Roman 1 there. Okay? Remember, that's what a prime number is, folks. P can only be written... That's p times 1. That's what makes it a prime number. There is no other factorizations. Okay, p, I'll put dot to connote multiplication here. Okay, so you see here we go. We got, this is the form we have. Here it is, p, and it's, and it's itself times 1, and that's it. And this is for all m and n, and these are the only m and n's that satisfy the, the condition we impose on k. All right, so what's that, that I, I, would, I will go ahead and proudly say QED, right? All seems well, you know, I, it's convinced me. But then guess what? Let's take a look at another larger number. This is kind of famous. There's some other number theoreticians who got this wrong. So uh, I don't feel too bad about this. But this is 2 to the 11th minus 1 is equal to 2047. Okay? Now it does take some time to verify this does have a prime factorization. I'm not saying I could do it. It's, it takes a little bit of time to verify this is equal to... 23 times 89. 2047 is 23 times 89. Now you can, it's not too hard to do mentally, but uh, anyway, you can verify that. So you see, this is not prime. Whoa, what happened here? I thought I just proved that anything in this form was prime. So this is not prime. Duh, we, we've created a counterexample, which invalidates my proof. Now, I think I know what's wrong with the proof, but you guys take a look at it. Let me know what you think. 
I think I know what's wrong. There's nothing wrong with what I've said in terms of using this as a condition. This fact that I didn't prove, uh, and then the fact that K can only be written like this, and you get this circumstance here, which would indicate that 2 to the K minus 1 is a prime number for all K, right? But remember, this is just one factoring formula, and I used it and, and hung my hat on it, right? So, um, so my proof isn't a proof, albeit it would conf a lot of people might think it is. If somebody just looked at it, they may go, oh, sure, that seemed like a good proof to me. It, it cannot be right. There's something wrong with what I've done here because I've produced a counterexample. This is a counterexample. Okay, one counterexample invalidates any general proof. Okay. So let me, again, I'd like to hear from you. I think I know the problem, but it's kind of hard to articulate it. So let me know what you think. And, and, and I've looked through a various number theory books. A number of older, a number, like a guy named Christian, something I can't think of his last name, thought that this was a prime number back in pre-calculator days. Uh, it was it appeared in a Van de Nijden textbook where he thought this number, so-called Mersenne prime, I think, uh, 2004, it looks prime, doesn't it? And it's almost prime. It's what they call a semi-prime because it's the product of two distinct primes and that's it. It only has four divisors, namely 1, 23, 89 in itself. But anyway, again, let me know what you think and let me know if you can articulate what's wrong with my proof because what I thought was a decent proof, it makes sense, is, is, is again, it's been invalidated by this counterexample, 2 to the 11th minus 1 being composite. Okay. All right, let me know.